What's going on everyone? Matesh here with Tech, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to edit photos on your phone. Now I'm sure many of you already do this but I'm going to show you guys a little bit more advanced techniques on how to edit photos using Snapseed because it gives you a lot of tools so you can take your photos from looking like this to looking like this and I just think everyone should know how to edit photos on your phone so you know what without me rambling on too much let's just get into the video. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you guys how to edit images using this image right here. Uh, it's of some mint plant growing in our backyard and I'm gonna try to do this quickly because you can just spend hours and hours editing and I've already told you guys I'm gonna use Snapseed. So here we go, opening it up in Snapseed. Uh, immediately when you open up Snapseed, you can see some of the filters type deal you can add on the bottom. So um, if you want to just give it a certain type of look, you can do that. This one's pop, accentuate. I think accentuate looks actually pretty good. I'm gonna be trying to make this one in this so instead we're gonna go over to tools I'm gonna show you guys how to use some of the tools to do this so first of all we're gonna to go to tune image uh, you can see this little graph here it shows you like how bright and stuff everything is um, the things you can do here are a lot so you can change the brightness which I'm gonna take the brightness down a little bit because I think this image is a little too bright turn the contrast up because I love contrasty images um, saturation yeah, I actually think it's pretty good I might just kick it up a little little bit not that much let's give it like a plus eight if you do too much saturation it usually tends to look pretty bad so i'm gonna turn the ambience up a little bit too because i like those colors turn the shadows down because i don't like seeing whatever it is this is next to the flowers next to the uh, mint leaves oh this is highlights well, i'll turn the highlights down a little bit too but i'm gonna turn the shadows down a little bit because i want it i want the shadows to be a little bit darker to give it that, give it really that contrast contrasty look uh, as for warmth, I might just give it a touch more warmth. And then if you want to see what it looks like before and after, you can hit that little button at the top right. If you hold it down, it'll show you the before and then after. Before, after. And I think that made a, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, next up, I'm going to use Curves. So Curves is a really powerful tool which you can like really change the image. So the way this works is the bottom part of it is the shadows, the top part of it is the highlights, and then you can just change this completely if you want to. Uh, the normal one just goes straight through diagonally and then what most people usually do is just apply an S curve to this so you just want to make a curve that looks a little bit like an S and it will give you usually a pretty contrasty look like this so all I did was take the highlights up a little bit and take the con the shadows down a little bit now if I look at the before and after you can see that made a really really big difference so definitely curves is something that you should learn to play around with don't be scared of it just go in mess around I mean the nice thing about this is it doesn't matter what you do because you can always undo it uh, in terms of curves you can also change specific colors so I can if I want to affect green because let's face it there's more green than anything else in this I can maybe turn the green down a little bit you can change it changes it to like a yellowish brownish dark green or if I want to turn the green up in the shadows I could do that and makes everything green yeah, it looks a little, give it a, gives it a bit of a weird look, honestly. I'm just going to go ahead and return it as much as I can to normal. That looks good. Once again, hit the top right to see the before and after, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, there's one more luminance, and that one's going to change how bright the image is. Uh, I am pretty fine with how it looks right now, so hit that little check mark on the bottom to apply it. Uh, okay, next up, we are going to take a look at... I'm just going to show you guys what perspective does. I'm not actually going to apply it to this one because I think the perspective is pretty fine. But what it can do is it can allow you to change your perspective on things. And you can see the one part of it that of the image that wasn't there before. So let me show you guys again. So you can see the black parts are parts of the image that weren't there before. And it's going to try to fill it in using smart algorithms to try to match what it is. It's just doing an okay job here. And like I said, I'm not going to apply it to this one because I don't think it really needs a change in perspective that much. Um, other tools that are really awesome. So selective is really cool. Uh, you can just drop a point and then it, anything, any changes that you make here will only affect that point. So you can change the brightness, contrast, saturation. So let me go ahead and turn the saturation up there. You can see that one looks way greener now, but it only affects that little bit of the point when you attach it. And you can also add many, many more points if you want. So go ahead and cancel out of this. Uh, go back to selective. So you can add one point, then you hit that plus button on the bottom, add more points. So if you want to change different parts of the image, just a little, whatever size you want them to be. So I can make this, so this will just affect, so depending on where you put it, like this will just affect that dark area, as you can see. It tries to pick it out smartly. So if I pick it and put it on this one, it'll just affect the plants that are close to it. This one will basically just affect that plant right there. So 
Selective is a really, really powerful tool that if you need some selective editing, so if there's a person and you want them to shine a little bit more in the image, you could do that. Uh, brush is also a great tool. So you have four different types of brushes. You have dodge burn, exposure, temperature, and saturation. And each one will do that one specific thing. So let's go ahead and show you with exposure because I think that's the easiest one. So right now, whatever I paint with my finger will t take the exposure down by one whole exposure point. So you can see wherever I'm painting is it's taking the exposure down there. So yeah, it's a really, really awesome tool that you can use to just make some parts of it work. So this is just an eraser, so I'm just gonna erase that brush. There we go. And I can turn the exposure up if I want to. See, it's it's just a really, really, really awesome tool that you can do here. Uh, another awesome one is healing. Um, it's once again, really hard to show you in this image, but if there's something that is out of place, so for example, I don't want this stick here, I can just highlight it and it will try its best to get rid of it. Now it will mess up because nothing close to it is going to match what was supposed to be there. So in this case, it made a pretty big error right there. Um, let's try getting rid of some of this. Yeah, that worked relatively well. But yeah, it's it's a tool that can be worked used really well if you have like the background all be the same and then there's like one little thing in front of it. But in this image, it's not a great one. Um, the other thing, so here between from Glamour Grow to Noir are going to be like filters that you can add to this. Uh, for this image in particular, I think Vintage works really well. I think Vintage can give it a nice, nice look and you get a lot of different options for Vintage. You can also change, so even if you pick a filter that you like, even if you pick a style that you like rather, if you decide that you want the vignette strength to be a little bit more, you want the image a little bit darker, you want the style strength to be a little bit higher or lower, you can do that. So create your own basic filters really. And you can see, I, I actually like Vintage quite a bit for this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one and I think that looks good to me. Some people may call this overdone, but I like the look. And you do, really, you should you know, always experiment when it comes to photography. You should create your own style. Don't just copy what other people do because, I mean, the other people are already doing it. Why are you trying to copy them? So uh, I'm cropping a little bit to get rid of some of the uh, edges. And um, yeah, I think that looks really good. Some other thing you could do, like a prior frame, if you are someone who likes to have frames on your images, gives it that nice little vintagey look since it's already pretty vintagey. Vintagey, I'm sure that's a word. You know, give it a little bit of frame if you want to. For me, this is good enough. I'm gonna hit that done button and it will prepare the photos. It'll apply all those things and it will save it. So this is this one and let's see if I can find this one. And this is the new one. So this is the after. And yeah, that's how you edit images using Snapseed. All right, there you guys have it. That is how you edit photos using Snapseed. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys liked it, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys wanna see more videos like this and share it with anybody you think could use tips on editing their photos. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this one. Oh, before I go, actually, do you guys see this t-shirt right here? This t-shirt is finally available on Teespring. I've worn this in a couple of times, but yeah. It's new merch. It's finally available on Teespring. Link is in the description. Also, while you're down there, go ahead and follow me on Instagram if you guys want to see more photos like this that I post on Instagram or behind the scenes and things like that. And definitely on Twitter too. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.